sure that uh, we'll put them in the chat as we go. So any questions at all, they might get answered as we go through. And I'm sure Nicole is going to answer so much of of what we're ready to ask, but just put it in the chat. And then at the end during our Q&A session, we'll go back and we'll answer any of those questions in the order they were received. Um, so as I discussed earlier, we do have our new foundations program starting next week. And we have our portfolio admissions program starting July 5th. Um, a lot of our professors that teach here at NYSD also teach at Parsons. So it's kind of interesting mix that we could help mentor you to get to get you to where you really want to be. So at NYSD, we're really about the trade, about help creating your trajectory to get you from point A to point B. And that's why we brought on Nicole from Parsons. She's an uh, admissions counselor, right? And uh, she works at Parsons. She's also a visual designer. She's been there for over three years. And she's part of the committee that accepts the portfolios for the people that are interested in going to Parsons. So uh, I'm going to let her talk a little bit more about herself and introduce Nicole. Thank you for being here, Nicole, and welcome. Thank you for having me. So yes, my name's Nicole Cody. Um, I'm an admissions counselor at Parsons. I've been there for three years. Um, and I'm a um, visual artist, I'm a writer, I've been in the visual arts sphere for about seven years, so basically my entire career up to this point. Um, so today I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to bring up my PowerPoint in a second because I think visuals will be really helpful, um, about what Parsons looks for. So both in the portfolio portion, but also in the application in general. And um, for anyone who's interested in being a first time student or a transfer student, I'm going to touch on how those applications and those portfolios might be different for those two groups. Um, before I share my screen, I also wanted to pop into the chat a link to sign up for the mailing list. So if you're somebody who um, wants to get updates about what transfer events that we're offering or portfolio review appointments or what our attendance is going to be at the National Portfolio Days this year, definitely recommend because you're going to get some email updates through that registration. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. If everyone bear with me for one second. There we go. All right, fantastic. So I hope everyone can see that. If not, just feel free to interrupt me. Um, and we also, I have, I'm currently in Connecticut right now. We have some thunderstorms happening. So if I cut out my audio, also let me know. Um, so just to kind of dive right in, I just wanted to give a brief overview. I know many of us are native New Yorkers or we've lived in New York for quite some time. So most people have probably walked by campus or walked by our buildings, but Parsons is housed within the new school. And we do have several colleges within the new school. Parsons is by far the largest college. We have 10,000 students, about half attend Parsons. But we also have the Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts and the College of Performing Arts. And the beauty of it is that even if you're a Parsons student, you're more than welcome to take classes outside of Parsons, especially if you're interested in a liberal arts field or in a performance field. And then we do have a campus in Paris. It's a much smaller campus. It only has about three to 400 students, but we do have three majors there that are offered there full time. Um, so if you're somebody who wants to do all of your education in Paris, um, I'm happy to connect you. They have their, actually their own admissions team that can walk you through the process and get you set up for your application. And really quickly, I know we have um, a lot of fashion students in the room, so I wanted to talk about what majors we offer and what um, majors are fashion related, because I think it can get a little bit confusing. Um, so of course, we have BFA Fashion Design. That is one of our most competitive programs at Parsons. You would be doing a lot of garment construction, working in the fashion, fashion industry in that regard. Um, to give you an idea of how competitive it, it, it is, um, it's about a 15 to 18% acceptance rate. So it is pretty rigorous, which is why it's super important to put together a portfolio that you feel is your best work. Um, if you're somebody though who is interested in fashion design, but maybe you want more flexibility and you want to pull from a bunch of different art forms that are not fashion related, I do want to point out we do have a major called integrated design. 
Um, that is our self-designed major, and a lot of our fashion students do end up transferring into that program because they want more flexibility. Um, I think a good way to illustrate this is we had someone about two or three years ago, she graduated and um, she really wanted to be in the fashion world, but she felt that the fashion design program was a little bit too constricting for her. And she wanted to take graphic design classes, environmental science classes, more business classes. So she ended up transferring into the integrated design program. And for her senior thesis, she actually made a bra subscription box company and she designed all of the bras, all of the garments. She did all of her marketing and PR. Um, she did um, sustainability classes to think about sustainability with her garments. So really she interwove all, all of these classes for her fashion interest and she's very successful now working in the fashion industry. So if you're somebody who wants optimal flexibility, I definitely highly recommend integrated design um, just because it is actually also a smaller cohort. Um, so you get a little bit more individualized attention in that way. And then if you're somebody who wants to do strictly the management or business side of fashion, um, you may have heard of our design management program. Um, that's a really great program for someone who wants to only dabble in garment construction. They want to do more business PR, marketing and advertising. And that's actually our one Parsons program that does not require a portfolio. All of the others are BFA programs and they do require a portfolio for admission. And as a brief nod to our Paris campus, we, these are the three majors that are offered in Paris full time. Um, we do have fashion design offered there as well. My understanding is that the fashion design program there is really, really focused in luxury, um, luxury fashion. So maybe that would pique some interest for some of you. And then we do have our design management program there as well. All right, so let's jump into the portfolio portion because these are where the visuals come in. And so I can kind of walk you through past examples of what people have submitted. And our portfolio requirements are very different than other art schools because they're so restrictive a little bit because <laughs> we actually only require eight to 12 pieces of work or I like to phrase it eight to 12 slides because you can get really creative with how you lay your slides out. Um, so for example, if you are doing fashion sketches for a collection, you can actually put all of your sketches onto one slide and that counts as one piece. Um, so you can get really creative and actually get more work in that way. Um, descriptions are optional, but highly recommended since you can't be in the room when the committee is looking over your work. So we love to know title, we love to know materials, um, if you were inspired by anything in particular, what your concepts are. And then all visual media is welcome. So even if you're applying to photography, for example, but you've dabbled in drawing and painting as well, definitely include whatever you feel is your best work, um, regardless of the major that you're applying to. We definitely love to see experimentation in that way. And then the portfolio is submitted online with a Parsons Challenge. And I think the Parsons Challenge gets a little tricky because it's completely open-ended. I'm gonna show some examples later on in the slides to give you an idea, but it's just a way for us to gauge um, your ability to run with an idea and execute um, a, new, a new project um, with that idea. And then if you're somebody who's thinking about transferring as an upper level transfer student, so a sophomore or higher, we definitely recommend putting a lot of work into your portfolio that's major specific. That way you're showing the admissions committee and the faculty that you're ready for that level of work. So I'm, feel free to take a screenshot of this slide if you would like to. I'm gonna walk through each of these questions individually with some work examples. Um, our first work, or our first question I should say is, is your work personal? So Parsons really, really advocates that the portfolio be a reflection of who you are, what your interests are, what your values are, and really using the portfolio space to comment on society or comment on politics or things that are conceptual in nature. Um, so I have Elliot's piece here. Um, Venus gets a stomach ache is a sculpture that he made. And he wanted to comment on how social media can often cause low self-esteem and body dysmorphia um, for young people in, in the Gen Z category. So um, I thought this was a really great example of taking something that he was seeing in social media and society and commenting on it through his work. And the same thing for Linda here. Linda actually um, was a musician as well. So she recorded all of her own music on these records. And then she superimposed photos of her hometown over top. So it's personal in that she recorded the music 
and also that these pictures reflect where she grew up and where she came from. Um, and another cool element of her work is that it disintegrates over time. So actually the music quality of her records will continue to dis distort as they're played, which is another cool element that she mentioned. And another thing that I wanted to take note of, just because it does make Parsons incredibly unique in the portfolio landscape, we do not require observational work. Um, so we don't require still lives or figure studies or things that are technical in nature for practice. Um, so you can, of course, include those in your portfolio if you would like to, but they're not required. And actually what ends up happening, most of the students that I work with, is that you have so much other work that often you can't fit the observational technical work that maybe you did for practice. Um, so definitely worth, you know, if you have an observational piece that you really love, um, but maybe you don't feel it's dynamic enough, you can definitely recreate something with that same idea. I think Matt did a great job here. He actually originally had an observational drawing of his kitchen. He thought it wasn't quite dynamic enough for his portfolio, so he took that idea and made this um, sculptural piece instead about his family's love of um, food and cooking. Our second question, how are you displaying your process? We welcome process work in your portfolio. Um, this is actually a product design or a package design example. But of course, if you're looking at fashion, you know, you can include your fashion sketches all the way through to the final garment construction. And then maybe if you haven't quite gotten there yet to the final construction moment, you can also just include your process as well. And be creative with your space, with your, you know, how you lay things out. This student chose to include their process and and their final piece all on one slide. Um, I think that's a great way to do it versus using individual slides. And this is another great example. This student wanted to show us before they added color to their piece, what it looked like and kind of show us their artistic process. Our next question, are you using space effectively? So again, using your slides in a way that makes sense. Um, this student, Alice, she chose to do her, um, her nine square grid of all of her photos of the same series baptism on one slide. I think that's a great use of space there. Same thing with Joshua. He wanted to do a triptych instead because he is working in a series. Um, so he wanted to be creative with his space and put things together that went together. And then a quick note on documentation, because I think this is especially, especially relevant for fashion design. You want to make sure that you're documenting your work at its best. So you think about 2D work like this, you want to make sure there's nothing distracting in the background, that your background is white or clear. If you're thinking about fashion design in particular, um, thinking about how your garment is photographed. Is it going to be worn by somebody? Are you going to do a video of it? You know, is it a fashion show moment where you're going to have someone walking with it on? Um, so thinking about how is your garment or how is your work going to be shown in the best light? Um, the admissions committee, especially for fashion design, we want to see every detail that we can see. And we saw a trend last year where folks were doing a lot of video work. So videoing their garments outside or on a runway. Um, we had someone who, because of COVID-19, he went to basically an abandoned parking lot and did a makeshift runway show with masks and everything. Really cool stuff like that. So really think outside the box, get creative with how you want to document your work. And if you're somebody, I think this is super relevant to fashion sketches especially, who wants to show a sketchbook or something along those lines, um, this is a great layout to, to use. You can know you have your whole slide here where you can include, you know, six to eight sketches realistically and they're going to be high quality and we're going to be able to see all the detail. Um, so our second to last question, are you looking at different forms of media? Be super creative with your media. Um, you know, we have seen, especially for fashion, um, with materials not being as accessible maybe this past year, a lot of exploration of wearable sculpture, of using materials that aren't super typical in fashion, um, you know, branching out into sustainability, for example. So really think about getting creative with your material use. Um, Alice used, you know, a lot of needlework in this piece, but also some collage work. Um, this student was using money for, his, you know, collaging with his photography. And then for this student, for fashion design, she was looking at using 
plastic wrap and tool and different things. And unfortunately, the video kind of got stuck here. It won't play. But um, she also showed us this behind the scene clip of her um, doing her photo shoot where there was bubbles everywhere and it was very whimsical um, for her garment. And it was this is just a really cool way to interpret um, a time where maybe we don't have access to traditional textiles. And then our last question, is your portfolio curated? Um, so to give you a little glimpse of the admissions process, this is actually what we see when we first open your portfolio. So we see everything outlined like this. So, you know, once you have your work picked out, we always recommend think about how you're going to start and end your portfolio strong and how all the works flow together. So maybe you want to group things by theme, maybe you want to group things by color story, really get creative with how you're ordering things and telling a story to us through your imagery. All right, so the Parsons Challenge, this is the tricky part. <laughs> um, so the Parsons Challenge, it is completely open-ended. It does not change year to year. It's the same prompt every year. Um, so for our BFA students, we ask that you create a new work inspired by another theme or another concept in your portfolio. Um, so for example, you know, we have fashion students all the time who they made one garment for a collection and then maybe for their Parsons Challenge, they make an addi additional one for the same collection. Or maybe they branch into something completely new. If you're thinking about our design management program, our BBA program, this is completely optional. You don't have to do it, but you can submit a Parsons challenge. And then we ask for those students, you know, think about an invention, an ad. Um, you, of course, if you're a working visual artist, you can also comment on your work or expand on your work. But you're welcome to submit a Parsons challenge for the design management program if you would like to. And we give you an additional one to three slides for your Parsons challenge. It's up to you if you use one or all three. Um, some students like to show their process quite a bit, and others would prefer for us just to see the final product, and that's totally fine. So some examples I wanted to show. I'm going to show two for the Parsons Challenge. Um, so this student, Luke, he originally included this birth of a bird mixed media piece in his portfolio. And he wrote this beautiful essay about how, you know, it was about life and rebirth and how abandoned buildings, you know, you're going to see flowers and nature take it over eventually. And so he took that same idea and for his Parsons Challenge, he wanted to move outside of his comfort zone and do a ceramic piece. So he decided to create this ceramic piece, this mug. Um, here's a close-up of the birth of the bird. You'll see how much detail is in there. And then this is his mug that he created. And he wanted to talk about vitality in life by creating something that you would drink out of. And he showed us his process. And then final, once it was glazed and, and, and fired and all set. Um, so this is just one example. This is a student who wanted to branch out of their comfort zone. And then I do have a fashion-related one. So actually, Alice did end up applying to photography, specifically to do fashion photography. But she wanted to dabble um, in fashion in her portfolio in some way. Um, so her original piece that she was inspired by in her main portfolio was this photography series she did on intimate apparel. And, um, you know, this, this, the piece, this piece is called Bras and Drawers. And she wanted to show us her sketchbook, what she was thinking about. She was starting to think about roughs and how those are, she felt those in history of fashion were very feminine. We see cutouts on the bottom here. And then her person's challenge, which she included, is her photographing herself wearing these roughs that she created. Um, and she did a triptych of it, which is really cool. So we see multiple angles happening. Um, so this is a good fashion-based one. Like I said, we saw a lot of wearable sculpture last year as well, especially with materials not being as accessible because of COVID. So really, it's completely open-ended. It's just a way for us to see your creative process a little bit more. And then really quickly before we go into Q&A, and of course I can circle back to any of those examples um, if anyone wants to look at those a little bit more closely. Um, but just to kind of go over the application process for first time students and for transfer students because they're a little bit different. Um, so you're gonna use the Common App regardless of whether you're a first time student or a transfer student. You'll see once you're in the Common App that they'll say, are you a transfer student? And you will just select yes. Um, so you're gonna do the Common App. And then we do require one essay, so why the new school? So why you'd like to come to Parsons? Um, is it, you know, 
the, about the faculty, pe- specific people you want to work with. Um, we also love to hear about your career goals, really letting your personality come through in that essay. Official transcripts are required too. So if, um, your high school transcripts, and then of course, any colleges you've attended, any programs you've attended, you're gonna want to submit transcripts for those so that you can be considered for transfer credit. And then letters of recommendation as well. So if you are a transfer student, you've been out of high school for a year or more, you of course don't need a counselor recommendation, but you can do an employer, you can do a teacher, a mentor, really anybody who knows you well. And then we are test optional, so no SAT or ACT. If you are um, not a native English speaker and you, you're, you're you have not been in English school systems before, we do have a requirement for the TOEFL or IELTS or Duolingo. Um, And I'm of course happy to answer any questions about that, but if you've already been attending a school in the US, more often than not, you do not need to submit one of those scores and I'm happy to verify that. And then about deadlines. So this is actually super important to note because this is not typical for us. We unfortunately are not going to be accepting spring applications this year. So the next time that we can accept applications is for fall 2022. Because of COVID-19, we had an extreme overwhelming interest this year. So Parsons is completely at capacity for this entire academic year. People are just too excited. Um, So we do have entry for fall 2022 available. That application will um, pop up in September of this year. So you can get started at any point. Transfer students have until March 1st, and then if you are a first-time student, you have early action November 1st and regular decision January 15th. And then for our transfer applicants, this cool bubble here is actually a QR code. I know that's a little little outdated, but I think this would be helpful. Feel free to screenshot this, or you can use your phone right now and take a picture of it. This is going to link you to our transfer credit video. So if you are someone who wants to really get into what the transfer credit process looks like for Parsons. This video is great. It's pretty short. It just gives you a glimpse as to what we look for. Um, Just really briefly, the student's level of placement for transfer is completely holistic. So we're looking at your classes you've taken, of course, and if those classes are accredited or, you know, those nitty gritty details. But we also are looking at your portfolio, your Parsons challenge, your essays, basically all the things. Um, to come up with a year level of entry for you. Um, And the highest level of entry for fashion design is sophomore entry. They're very specific about the program. Um, So unfortunately, they don't take junior transfers, but they do take sophomore transfers. And if you are somebody who is thinking about transferring at a later date and you want to know what types of classes you should be taking for this upcoming year, um, we're happy to help you with that. My typical rule is to say, take as many foundation classes as you can that are similar to our first year program. Um, But of course, too, if you would like to get a personalized look at what classes you should take. We do offer a bunch of different events that you can do. Um, Again, I have a cool QR code here, so feel free to take a screenshot of this. Um, That will help you get to the registration for all four of these events. Um, We do offer transfer Wednesdays. Um, Those are 30 minute appointments. You would meet specifically with a Parsons admissions counselor or um, an assistant director of Parsons. And they would go over your transcripts, tell you what year level you are gonna be. Um, They can give you an estimate. Obviously we have to wait for you to be admitted to do the final process. And then they can also give you details about the program you're thinking about or give recommendations for what classes you should be taking at your current school if you're thinking of transferring later. We also have transfer webinars, but those, we're not doing those right now, but they should pop back up in the fall. So definitely keep checking back with us. And then we do have portfolio review one-on-ones and they are pretty much offered all summer. Um, You can get an appointment usually at any time. They're they're during the the work day and maybe a little bit later. We do have some ones that are sensitive to time zones and working schedules, but I definitely recommend a one-on-one appointment, especially right before you submit your portfolio. That way you can get some final feedback. And we typically don't offer the one-on-one appointments, the portfolio appointments as often in the fall. So the best way to see us in the fall is gonna be through the National Portfolio Day circuit. We don't know yet if that's going to be in person or virtual or a combo of both. Um, So I would recommend if you're thinking about getting reviewed in the fall, check back with us in August. We should have a better idea of what the availability is going to look like. And of course, for National Portfolio Days, 
I always say get there early, pick out your three or four schools that you want to see, um, you know, reserve with them or do whatever you have to do to make sure you see them that day. Um, and then after that, if you have extra time, you can go to see other schools that maybe you're not as interested in, but you're thinking about. Um, but definitely those get booked up really quick. So the earlier you get to the event, the better. And that's it. That's my entire PowerPoint presentation. I wanted to make it quick so that we had plenty of time for Q&A. If anyone wants to email us, the Parsons admissions team, we do have this general email here, thinkparsons at newschool.edu. Um, that goes right to the Parsons inbox. We're here to help you schedule appointments if you need to, if the links aren't working. Um, we're, we can offer guidance over email as best we can, um, but definitely feel free to drop this email down. I'll also put it in the chat um, just to give you an idea um, of what the Parsons team can offer. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Bear with me for one second. That was amazing. It might have been quick, but it was chock full of information. So <laughs> I know that we do have a lot of questions because I think that Parsons is unlike any other school for their portfolio challenge. And an interesting tidbit is that uh, Suzanne Mo Susanna Moyer, she teaches in our foundation program. She actually teaches at Parsons in the MFA program. We had a couple of questions about that. Um, and as well in the Parsons Paris. So there, it's fashion seems, and we talked about this yesterday, fashion just seems like such a big world and yet it's so small and all of us are interconnected. So I'm gonna kick off with our first question here. And, um, Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. So to apply for the portfolio program, jo Josefina, to apply for the portfolio program, do I have to already be in NYSD? So Josefina, in, the, in our design certificate program, uh, one of the culminating classes is portfolio. So with our one-on-one -on -one mentors, we make sure that we are guiding you in the portfolio realm of to what we want to do with it, what your end goal is. And that's why we have webinars like this, so that if your end goal is Parsons, it's going to be a very different portfolio than if your end goal is FIT, perhaps. Or maybe it's going to be a different portfolio if you want to start your own business as soon as you finish the certification program. So uh, I think that that's what you were referring to, but if not, let me know, take yourself off of mute and just chime in. Um, but you will get that in the, in the design certificate program. And I know that in the 3D program, you're really going to have a, a, a very elevated portfolio as you know 3d as nicole was saying last year she saw so much more of video and 3d this is where fashion is going this is where the world is going and covid only accelerated that piece exponentially i think um so i'll go to the next question and yep nicole put those links in there and of course we will make sure that we follow up in our emails to you guys anybody that attended today so that you can have access to this and um the link above is for the portfolio email um so 15 to 18 percent acceptance rate for fashion design so you know I think that it's really important as you go through the foundation program, whether you're here for foundation or certification or even just for um, the actual portfolio itself, maybe, you know, open up to what you're thinking with what Nicole had said about the different aspects that still integrate fashion and are still a very, very important part of the fashion industry. Even that one portfolio, uh, Nicole, I, I can't remember the name of the student that you know, she was doing fashion photography, you know, I, personally, I started as a photo stylist and as a creative director, working as a visual artist, as a fashion, someone who is in the fashion realm, you know, photography really could be a, a discipline in and of itself. So it, I think it was really beautiful to see that it's a broad range of programming that you can apply for. So it's, it's a way to think about that a little bit more uh, in the long haul when you think about the acceptance rate. Um, and again, I know that here at, at NYSD, we have really small class sizes. So I think that if you're interested in a program, like what Nicole had said, the what's the other program that it was a... The self-design program is integrated design. 
Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And there's more mentorship and more handholding. And I think that coming from a place like NYSD, that might benefit you as well. So it's something to think about if you want to design your own program. Like, I think that's just one of the, the other silver linings of COVID that everybody that I, I speak to is like, you know what, I am an accountant, but I really want to be a fashion designer. And so design your life. This is the time that you're doing it. And this is why you're taking these foundational courses courses and these certification courses because you want to live the dream and right here is where you start creating the dream so I love the design your own program it sounds great I want to go back just for that um so how long of a description on each slide uh, half of the questions are from me but you know if if they were gonna I tend to be really wordy so how long should they should they limit themselves on their slide description what 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 would you suggest, Nicole? Yeah, so there is no limit as far as I'm aware when you're in the software, you're putting everything together. So we typically recommend a paragraph at most just to make sure that the committee reads the full thing. Um, so, you know, five to six sentences with a title, of course, if the work has a title, materials, obviously, you can list those as well. Um, students do go longer than that. I will say, though, that for the Parsons Challenge specifically, you get an essay with that. So you can write three to 500 words on the Parsons Challenge in a separate essay. So you don't have to use the caption space in that case. Okay. And so that little description that you speak of should be on the slide itself. It actually, we reword or we refigured things out. So actually you get a separate space now. Okay. So it doesn't have to be on the slide. You, when you're in the software, and we have how-to videos on our website, because I think the software sometimes isn't as intuitive. Um, there is, you know, you put everything on your slide. We definitely recommend don't put text on the slide unless it's relevant to the work, that the, the text um, is relevant to the work in some way, shape, or form. If it's a caption, it's going to go in a separate box along the side. It will pop up and you'll be able to fill it out, kind of like a speech bubble almost. Okay, great, because that's super important. And we, we normally work in the Adobe Suite, and when we're working on their portfolios, they're working in InDesign to create that. But essentially, their visual files that they're uploading, what should, what should, how should they be upload ready for, for both the portfolio and the challenge? So we accept a variety of file types. So JPEGs, PDFs, really any, anything. I have not seen things that aren't accepted. I think the one thing yeah. might be YouTube links maybe are a little tricky because they don't pop up in the right way sometimes. Um, but we accept all different types of files. Um, it's, we do see students often who just want to have, you know, do it in design and make their portfolio a PDF and they just upload the one PDF and they're all set. And then some students want to use our online software, kind of, it's kind of like PowerPoint and they want to actually construct everything like a PowerPoint presentation would be constructed. So it's very, very flexible, whatever a student is most comfortable with. And if they have any issues, we, we can be their tech team and we can help them figure out what, why something might not be uploading. Okay, so there's no preference necessarily for uploading. No preference. We just, my top tip just to make, um, your portfolio the most competitive it can be is don't overcrowd too much. Of course, you can include things that are maybe a part of the same collection on the same slide to save space, but you don't want to overcrowd to the point where the admissions committee is confused what's going on. Um, so think about your spacing. Think about that the admissions committee might not be able to zoom in as much as they might need to, depending on how small you're making things. Excellent. That's why the visual was so helpful as well. Um, Sarah Lynch said, should we get fashion construction experience before we apply? That's a great question. So it's not required. We have students from all different types of backgrounds who weren't necessarily doing fashion before they got to Parsons. Um, we're here to teach you fashion, essentially. So it's not a big deal for you not to have any of that experience. My tip, though, in, as an alternative, we do, since it's so competitive for fashion design, we do like to see at least a little bit of 3D making in your portfolio in some way, shape, or form. So that can be sculptural work. That can be embroidery. You can you know, dabble in wearable sculpture or things of that nature. And it doesn't have to be perfect because 
You're showing us the work that you're making with the resources that you have at the time. We understand that you're not going to have all the fashion resources that Parsons does. So things don't have to be perfect, um, but just that you're experimenting with the ideas and you're thinking in 3D. Um, that's what the fashion committee is looking for. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Um, so Victoria asks, is the artwork required to have multiple resources used to create it? Can it be a realistic drawing? Yeah, so when I say like um, realistic or observational drawing, you definitely can include those. We just always recommend that they have a concept to them or a personal connection. So what I mean by that is if you're drawing a landscape, for example, but it's of a particular place that means something to you and your family or is a pivotal thing to you, then that's conceptual, that's personal, and that can find a place in your portfolio. Um, I've seen students submit portraits of their grandmothers or their grandfathers or their moms or, you know, so things like that. You can definitely do realistic drawing in that way. Um, and we, we don't need like extensive resources or, you know, if you're pulling from different artists or being inspired by different artists, you can mention that in your description. Like I was inspired by so-and-so, but you don't need to cite them or anything like that because we're all visual artists who are, you know, looking at your application. So we generally know who you're talking about. Um, so definitely feel free. Realistic drawing can be absolutely put in your portfolio as long as it's personal to you. And she also asked, Victoria, can you take multiple courses, visual art and fashion? Yes. Um, so essentially how it works to give you kind of the logistics, if you're coming in as a freshman or a first time student, you have to do the Parsons first year, which is a foundation year. So you have to take a bunch of different classes that are not fashion related. And then you would start your fashion coursework your second year. And we wanna make sure that you have the space in your degree progress to branch out into other categories of art or even into liberal arts or performance as well. So we try to give you as much flexibility as possible. You're gonna have mandatory fashion classes that you take in that program. But we, of course, want you to have liberal arts space as well to dabble in whatever you'd like to dabble in and elective space in the arts. Um, so we don't want you to ever feel boxed in that you only can take certain classes. And I know a lot of other colleges, especially, you know, in New York, too, um, you have gen ed requirements where you have to take math and you have to take science. We don't have that at Parsons. Um, we do ask that you take five liberal arts classes at some point, but they can be all writing or all psychology, or you know, they can be literature class, whatever you would like to take um, that is interesting to you. Interesting. Um, so the essay, what kind of weight does it hold comparatively to the portfolio and the challenge? How so important is the essay? Yeah, so it does have some weight. Um, I think there's often, I mean, and this is dependent on the art schools that you're applying to. Some might view the essay in a different way than Parsons does. But Parsons, in addition to being an art and design heavy program, obviously, you're going to do a lot of writing with us. You're going to be writing artist statements. You're going to be writing essays about your work, what you're inspired by, um, some research papers probably thrown in there too occasionally. So they do look at your writing and they want to make sure that you can communicate your ideas. And it's okay. We see different students with different writing abilities all the time. Um, you, you don't have to feel that it has to be perfect. The essay doesn't have to be perfect, but that it shows your personality, it shows what your objectives are for coming into Parsons. That's kind of the most important part is they just want to see what you're interested in. So for example, that student I mentioned with the subscription box, she mentioned that in her essays as well, that she thought of this idea. She wasn't, wasn't fully fleshed out to her yet, but she was really interested in subscription boxes. So even if it's not a fully formed idea, we just want to see what interests you in your essays. So they do hold some weight, yeah. Excellent. And so she knew when she was coming in that she was applying that that's what she would do. And she worked throughout the entire program to actually create that. Right, exactly. And I think she, you know, she was forming the idea along the way. But I do remember initially she was very fascinated with this trend of ordering clothing through a subscription box where they styled you. Um, and then she ended, she ended up going into integrated design because that seemed like the best bet for her because it was the most flexible thing she could do to work in the fashion industry component that she wanted to. 
-hmm. Excellent. Um, so Brianna said, is the eight to 12 slides separate from the one to three slides for the Parsons Challenge? Yes, so you get a total of 15 slides to do with what you will. The challenge, yes. <laughs> uh, Sarah Lynn, do you have any quick advice about the MFA fashion programs? That's a good question. So I'm, I specifically work with mostly undergraduate students. So as far as the MFA fashion programs, they're also very competitive and they have very specific fashion or portfolio fashion portfolio requirements. Um, so I highly recommend, I can actually put you in touch with um, Jessica, who's our counselor for that program. Um, she's going to be able, she's a visual artist herself. She, you know, she's obviously, um, you know, she's lived in New York for quite some time. She, she knows the scene. So she's able to give some perspective as to what that particular MFA looks for. Um, and I can pop, I mean, I think I had it on my slides, but we can connect you with Jessica via the, the other email as well, the Think Parsons email. That's amazing. And as I said, also Susanna Moyer, she does teach in that program as well. And um, that's how I got connected with Nicole by one of the other professors that also teaches in the program. So it, it's definitely interconnected in the sense that uh, we're all working on this together. Um, Justin Andrews, I'm already in a BFA program. I am looking to gain another in fashion design. What expectations or standards are there for students who want to do another BFA? That's a great question. So we do see that occasionally. It's not as common. Um, we typically see students who have completed an, a BFA at another place they're coming into one of our MFA programs. We, we tend to, just because we don't want to see you repeat the same coursework over again, and it might be a little bit boring, um, we tend to refocus you into the MFA track, or we also have some certification programs that sometimes students like. You're still welcome to apply to a BFA program, but typically I always say, if you're going from a BFA program and you're applying to our fashion design program, sophomore entry is the highest they're gonna let you come in. So you're gonna look at about two and a half more years to finish the second BFA. So some people are totally fine with that. It's not a big deal yeah. that amount of time, yeah. um, but it's up to you. Cool. Just as a reference to that question, just to clarify even, even kind of deeper into what I was thinking. As yeah. a visual artist, I'm also doing graphic design as my first BFA. And so I want to kind of marry both worlds at some point after I graduate from fashion design. And so my initial goal is to use my portfolio as a space to, to integrate my ideas and my, and my philosophies regarding design and art and fashion and everything. And so I want to know from your perspective, is it best? Am I echoing? No, I can hear you fine. OK, cool. Yeah, I'm hearing myself back to myself. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I, I find that I want to learn um, as within any environment. If I don't have any other genetics to take for my coursework anyway, it's probably the best option and the best idea to do the BFA program in my, in my part. That's just my distinction, I think. Yeah. And I think, too, just to give you um, a better sense, I think what would be great in your case would be to have do one of these transfer appointments where you're specifically with a Parsons counselor who can Lay, you know, lay out all your transcripts and go over exactly what it's going to look like, how many more semesters you would have to finish the BFA. They'd be able to give you a, a better perspective as to what it's going to look like for you as an individual. Um, yeah. And those appointments are 4 to 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. But if you email, typically we can also find additional spots if that's awesome. not a convenient time. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Ariana Perez, I have the same question as Justin. Okay, great. Yeah, and maybe we can do one of these for the MFA program as well, because we, we are getting some interest in that. Um, and again, like sometimes you're coming to NYSD to just learn the skills so that you can know what the people that you're working with are capable of doing. So you don't have to be the best sewer to be a fashion designer. We know that, right? But it is important for you to acquire those skills so that the people that you are working with, you have a knowledge of that. So when you're contriving your business and what you're 
next few years of your life look like to you, um, you still might want the foundational aspects and then kind of create the path for yourself. So it's really interesting. Um, so I asked how, you know, can you have more than one of those one-on-one -on -one portfolio? I mean, that to me just is like amazing that you guys offer that because really it's going to help you guys tremendously. Yeah, so you absolutely can do more than one appointment. We typically yeah. cap you though at two or three, just so that mm -hmm. they're you know we we have so much interest. We want to make sure everyone gets at least one who is interested in it. Um, we my recommendation and what I think we all recommend at Parsons is doing an initial one-on-one -on -one portfolio appointment um, end of the summer if you're thinking about applying for the following fall, and then make those changes to your work and then a month month you know a month or two after come for your next one yeah and so that's exactly what i asked because so we're starting the portfolio program in june i say make that appointment right so say you're in our our july excuse me in our july portfolio program or in our june foundational program make that appointment get your portfolio see know where it is you need to go so that you can have the mentorship to guide you exactly with what they're asking you to do. And then you can follow that up after exploring those ideas, you know, in the next few months, because, you know, really we're, we're looking at the March deadline, right? Regardless, because it would be fall 2022. Right, exactly. That's the next time that we're going to be opening up applications. And so we have our, july portfolio schedule up august should be up shortly as well so definitely log on those appointments do fill up really quickly so my recommendation make the appointment now and then of course you can always you know change it you can cancel it whatever you need to do but just making sure you have it reserved yeah and just getting that feedback so you know where you really want what you really want to work on for the next few months with us for sure I love that. And, and, and yet, yes, I would say try to keep it to two. Do that first initial one and then do another one or, you know, during National Portfolio Day. So we know that we'll get the dates for that. And Nicole, I know you and I talked about this a little bit, but again, that National Portfolio Day, it's invaluable for you to get the feedback. You want that feedback. You want that time to make adjustments. And um, you said that you'll know more in September for the dates for that. I think that they told us August. So my recommendation, check in with us, or you can actually check in with them directly on their website too. But mm -hmm. August, they should have a better idea. I know that they've said in person. I know they've said hybrid. So it's going to be somewhere in there. And you may, and another side note to it, you may have to prepare different portfolios depending on what schools you want to prioritize that day. Um, I think a good example is FIT versus Parsons. You might show both those schools or see them both on the same day, but have two different portfolios for both of those since they're so different. Um, so definitely making sure you can show, if it's a virtual space, you can show things via PDF. Um, you can bring your laptop if it's in person, um, but we should have more information in August. Excellent. Um, so Victoria, how many pieces fashion design and how many drawings visual art are required? So I know it's going to be frustrating, but we have no requirements as far as number of pieces. So we leave it completely up to you. Um, if you are someone who is applying to fashion, like I mentioned before, I would do as much fashion in your portfolio or 3D making as, as you can that you're comfortable with. And then if you have additional space supplementing with other visual work that you've done in the drawing sphere or in photography. Um, so you can definitely customize your portfolio in that way. I know some schools do have very strict requirements, this many observational pieces, this many this we're completely open-ended. So whatever you feel is your best work. Yeah, very, very different than what we, what we talked about yesterday. Victoria, were you gonna say something? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm saying you're welcome. But, um, so I don't see any other questions. While we have Nicole here, anybody have any other questions? Justin? The quick question regarding the foundation program. So as a BFA applicant, 
I'm looking to bring in credits from not just one school, but actually a total grand total of three. Um, it's quite the kind of unique experience um, that I'd love to even explain more in my Parsons challenge or something. But um, uh, I'd like to just reference, when it comes down to foundation year, how extensive and how in-depth do you get into the foundations of your program, or do you not do anything in the major at all? That's a great question. And it's a very common situation. We have students who've been to four plus schools <laughs> before wow. coming to us. Super, nice. super common. Cool. Um, awesome. So the foundation year, yes, the first year you might dabble in your major, but it's not super common. And so to give you an idea, Parsons requires two classes. They're called Integrated Studio 1 and 2. Nice. And it's yeah. That's the one place where you might dabble in your major, but it also just might be adjacent to your major. So for example, um, one year for that requirement, we offered puppet making um, and people loved that. And a lot of our fashion students ended up in that class because they got to sew puppets and it was a cool experience. Um, so the foundation year is, it, it is a foundation year, but it's so open-ended and the professors try to make it incredibly creative and dynamic so that you don't feel that you're just taking drawing 101 or sculpture 101 or things that you've probably taken a million times. Right. And so if you're a transfer student and you've taken those types of classes at other schools, likely those will come in and cover that foundation year and you would be starting as a fashion student in the second year. Um, so it, it, it depends on the transfer credit, depends on the accreditation and how things are placed. We, we work with a registrar's office as well to determine how that's gonna look for you as an individual student. Um, but we definitely see students in that position all the time. We see a lot of our so um, sophomore level fashion students come in having already completed the foundation year in some way. Right. My follow-up question to that, just as a brief kind of short question, is when you're in the foundation program, is it per semester, is it the year or is it per semester enrollment? Like, say, can you be a, can you like be an upper level sophomore? Because right now, like at Queens College where I'm at right now, I'm up, I'm a lower level senior, and so I'm a first semester senior. Is that a thing for the foundation year? So yes, so you can come in, so when I say sophomore, you can come in as an upper level sophomore. So someone who's almost done with sophomore year, that's definitely a possibility. It just depends on how everything lines up. Got it. Cool, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And I have a question. What about if they've actually applied in the past and, and were, their portfolio was rejected? So that is a, the perfect example of get a portfolio review so that you can go over, the, you know, you can either take the portfolio that you originally submitted and bring that to the review and look it over with a person's counselor. They can give you suggestions. Or if you want to also bring in some new work and look things over. But that's where the portfolio review one-on-ones are incredibly important. And we don't ever want to make it seem like you're – this happens all the time. It's just so, the fashion design program in particular is so competitive that we don't want anyone to ever feel like their portfolio wasn't up to par. It might have just been because the program was so incredibly competitive that year that you had fantastic work, but maybe with some tweaks, you would be even more competitive the next time you applied. Um, so my advice is don't get discouraged. It's just because Parsons is it's so competitive for some of these programs that, you know, coming in to meet with somebody is your best bet to make the final little touches that will push you to that admit stage. Right. Just that feedback and just slight tweaking can make the change. And maybe perhaps by as an artist yourself, when you see their portfolio, maybe you'll see that they might be better off in a different path than fashion design, but something parallel, like what we talked about today. So yeah, I know a lot of our students have had that experience. So don't be deterred. If you, if you haven't made it in the past, that doesn't mean that you can't try again. I mean, President Lincoln ran for president several times before he actually became president. So if he could do it, you could do it. Mm -hmm. So that's really good to know. Thank you, Nicole, so much. I feel like we're good. We're six minutes in our time. Oh, three minutes. So, um, I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, I think that we got a lot of information today and I will definitely share those links 
And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys, whether you're starting next week in the foundational program or you're starting in our portfolio program. I will also put my email in here. So if you have any questions or if you want to follow up at all, please definitely uh, give us a ring or drop me a line. ISD.edu. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks for Thank calling. you, everyone. Please email us anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you.